So I literally, literally just hit publish on my Apple Silicon event preview. And a couple hours later, boom, like Steve Jobs style, boom. Apple sends out the invitations, puts up the website, teases the YouTube stream, and now it's on. Another Apple event, another one, third one this fall, following up on September's Apple Watch and iPad. Okay. Apple Watch and iPad. And October's HomePod mini and iPhone, because you know what's next, Apple Silicon. And I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. Sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. Now I'm gonna have a ton of videos going up during and after the event. And YouTube tells me 70% of you still haven't subscribed. So hit that button and bell and just make sure you don't miss any of them. Here's what the Apple event invitation, the email says. One more thing, please join us for a special Apple event from Apple Park. Watch it online at apple.com, November 10, 2010 at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And of course, if you tap the logo, it opens up in augmented reality on ARKit enabled devices. This time though, there's no twisty, turny, Apple logo, morphy, warphy into a date stamp. No, this time the logo just kind of folds down, almost like the lid of a MacBook. Things that make you go less, hmm, and more, ah. And if you're keeping track of the tweets of Greg Joswiak, Jaws, Apple's Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing, well, no wicked Steve Jobs theater flex this time, but no home screen either. This time we get a short movie clip of the logo with some theme music playing in the background. Though if they could have just gotten Lisa Jackson to snap the VR in the center of the ring while she was up on the roof, I mean, not for nothing, but I'm just saying it would have been hella awesome. But whatever, what does the artwork tell us? Well, zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance. As usual, as soon as people see an event design, any event design, there's insta speculation on what it could mean. And you know we go through this every year, just a spectacular amount of speculation. But the way it works is that Apple's marketing communications, their Marcoms, hands off the spec to the graphics design team, GD, who then come up with the artwork. In other words, the actual people making the actual art don't have any inside information as to the contents of the event. They just make the design based on what they're told to make by the people who do. So I always try to think of it in terms of big themes rather than specific Easter eggs. And so in September, it was a nice sky blue. And then lo and behold, one of the new iPad Air colors was sky blue. In October, we got a deeper, darker blue and cinema grading colors. And then iPhones that were in Pacific blue and could shoot Dolby Vision HDR and circles that could be the home pods or the camera systems, or whatever you wanted them to be. And this time we have a darkened Apple logo backlit by an explosion of color behind it. And it's reminiscent of the types of designs that Apple uses when they're gonna be announcing not just something new, but something especially new, like the original iPhone, most famously, even TV Plus most recently. But it's really only in the AR kit version with that lid opening and closing that the logo gives us just any hints of MacBooks at all. But because people are gonna people, we're already seeing all the hopes and dreams that the glowing Apple logo will be returning to the MacBook lineup. Something Apple ditched with the more advanced LCD panels and much thinner lids of the post 2015 12 inch MacBooks. And anyway, this logo isn't lighting up, it's being lit up from behind. It's literally blocking the light and the colors are also making some people wish for the return of the more Apple chromatic, iBook chromatic colors of the past. Everything from Bondi blue to tangerine orange to I guess flower power and Dalmatian. And Apple barely does rose gold on the airs right now as it is. But if there are new MacBooks in the new iPad Air colors, pink and green and blue, that would be amazing. But like Gandalf, I will only expect it when and if I see it. Of course, because of the tagline, some are hoping that we're gonna see Apple glasses as well, which I'll get to in a hot take minute, but unless it's more of an Apple monocle, which would also be cool, I guess, the artwork, at least the artwork doesn't give us any hint of that. So, the tagline. One more thing. 
I mean, it's iconic. It's one of the most iconic phrases ever used by the most iconic presenter of our time. And Tim Cook has used it before, kind of, I want to say kind of sparingly. The first time was back in September of 2014. One more thing. <laughs> Apple Watch is the most personal device we've ever created. Next was June of 2015. One more thing. <laughs> Apple Music, the next chapter in music. Then September of 2017. One more thing. This is iPhone 10. And in September of 2018, Bill Schiller got to show us one more iPhone, the iPhone 10R. There was nothing in 2019, though, as far as I can remember, and also nothing so far in 2020. Not even Apple Silicon at WWDC. Not at all, that got a truly historic day for the Mac. But even when Steve Jobs announced the previous switch, he didn't use the one more thing tagline. He didn't say it at all. He just said transitions. Let's talk about transitions. From Motorola's 68000 to PowerPC, from the classic OS 9 to OS 10, what's now branded as Mac OS, and then explaining the switch from PowerPC to Intel, much as Tim Cook, Johnny Saruji, Craig Federighi, and their teams explained the switch from Intel to Apple Silicon back in June. And yeah, Apple Silicon, not ARM. ARM is just the, uh, just the instruction set architecture, the ISA, that Apple is licensing for their custom CPU cores. Apple Silicon, though, includes those cores plus custom GPUs, graphics cores, custom a &E, or Apple Neural Engine cores, and all sorts of IP blocks from accelerators to controllers and much, much more. Things that are becoming vastly, vastly more important than just the CPU instruction set, which makes calling them ARM about as silly as calling a hot new AMD Ryzen and Big Navi or Ampere-based gaming rig and x86 PC. But I've already done a bunch of videos just detailing and explaining what Apple Silicon means. So I'll just link to them the more you know style in the description. And if you don't think Apple Silicon is big enough for one more thing, even if really in this context, that just means one more event in 2020 when we've all had to deal with everything from an unchecked pandemic to freaking murder hornets, murder hornets, then by all means, build up all the expectational debt for a hardcore gaming Mac or AAA Apple TV Plus or AirPod Studio or micro LED iPads Pro or sure, Apple Glasses. Because after using ARKit invitations for the last couple of events and sparking just all the LiDAR on your face rumors imaginable, let's just end this completely over the top style and say those were all just swerves for this. Or maybe, just maybe we can get away with two or three more things, 13 inch Apple Silicon MacBook and 13 inch and maybe 16 inch Apple Silicon MacBook Pro and anything else, anything from AirPods to AirTags, just let that be extra like the bonus topics Georgia Dow and I include in our podcast, Apple Talk, the first five episodes of which are available right now on Nebula with extra bonus topics. Nebula is the streaming platform I'm building along with education -y creator friends like Alex, a low-spec gamer, Jordan Harrod, Tech Alter, Epos Vox, Real Engineering, Real Science, and so many more. And we've also got our originals there, like working titles, where we break down the introduction sequences to some of our favorite shows, like I did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and collaborations in ways that just really wouldn't work on YouTube. Like I was in Half as Interesting's Big Brick documentary and a recent episode of Alex Goes Bananas. And yeah, what does all this have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, as the go-to source for the best documentaries on the net, they love educational content and thoughtful creators. And so we worked out this deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, not only will you get CuriosityStream, but you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free, for absolutely free. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off all of their annual plans. And 26% off is just the best deal you'll find anywhere. So click on the link in the description and get both CuriosityStream and Nebula for 26% off. 
or you can go to curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly for just $14.79 per year. Per year. Just click on the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. And clicking on that link just really helps out this channel. For a ton more on Apple Silicon and everything Apple's announcing this fall, click on the playlist above. I've got previews, unboxing, hands-on, and full reviews, and just so much more to come. So click on that playlist, and I'll see you next video.